The armamentarium for this procedures include rubber dam cassette, hand pieces, restorative cassette, burrs, floss, wedge, T-band, composite resin, etch, prime, and bond, and a curing light. General considerations include Preparations can range from a slot preparation to an amalgam type preparation. Slot preps have retention grooves in the preparation. Proximal cable surface angles should be at 90 degrees. The buccal, lingual, and gingival walls should all break contact with the adjacent tooth, just enough to allow the tip of an explorer to pass, approximately 0.5 millimeters. The gingival wall should be flat, not beveled, and all unsupported enamel should be removed. The axial wall of the proximal box should be 0.5 millimeters into dentin and should follow the same contour as the outer proximal contour of the tooth. The mesial distal width of the gingival seat should be one millimeter, which is approximately equal to the width of the number 330 burr. There are some considerations for primary versus permanent teeth. Primary teeth have thinner enamel and dentin with more prominent pulp horns. This necessitates less depth of the prep compared with an adult class three prep. Also, due to the cervical constriction of primary molars, the gingival seat will be too narrow if prepared too deeply. Primary first molars have the most pronounced mesial pulp horns, so class two restorations involving the mesial surface are not performed on these teeth. Place the rubber dam. Moisture control with composite resin restorations is a must. Place a wooden wedge in the inner proximal area being restored. This retracts the gingival papilla during instrumentation, which keeps the operator from cutting the interceptal rubber dam material and underlying gingiva, reducing the likelihood of hemorrhage into the proximal box. It also creates some pre-wedging, which helps to ensure tight proximal contacts of the final restoration. Using a number 330 burr and a high-speed turbine handpiece, with light brushing motion, remove caries and bevel the cable surface margins. To prepare the proximal box, begin at the marginal ridge by brushing the burr buccolingually in a pendulum motion and in a gingival direction at the dentin enamel junction. Continue until contact is just broken between the adjacent tooth and the gingival wall and the wedge is seen. If the gingival wall is made too deep, the cervical constriction of the primary molar will create a very narrow gingival seat. Take care not to damage the adjacent proximal surface. Remove any remaining caries with a sharp spoon excavator or with a round burr in the low speed handpiece. Place a light bevel on the cable surface margin, except for on the gingival wall. This is to increase the surface area for bonding and to remove the aprismatic layer of enamel. Extend the preparation on the occlusal surface as needed to remove all decay. Remove the wedge placed at the beginning of the treatment and place the matrix bands. While holding the matrix band in place, forcibly reinsert the wedge between the matrix band and the adjacent tooth beneath the gingival seat of the preparation. The wedge is placed with a pair of Howe pliers or cotton forceps from the widest embrasure. The wedge should hold the band tightly against the tooth, but should not push the band into the proximal box. It may be necessary to trim the wedge slightly to achieve a proper fit. The preparation should be etched for 15 to 20 seconds. Be certain that the etch extends well beyond the cable surface margin and covers any susceptible pits and fissures not included in the preparation. Rinse the etch out. Scrub in the concepsis and then scrub in the bond and light cure. Place packable composite into the preparation, 
then condense the composite into the preparation with appropriate instrument. For primary teeth, composite may be placed and cured in a single increment. Slightly overfill the preparation with material and use a ball burnisher to push the material towards and up and over the enamel margins. Once all excess material has been removed, cure for 20 seconds. Carefully remove the wedge and matrix band, removing the band in a buccolingual direction as opposed to an occlusal direction. This will be less likely to damage the marginal ridge of the newly placed restoration during the withdrawal. After the matrix band and wedge have been removed, cure the restoration one more time, directing the light towards the proximal from the buccal or lingual approach. Remove the rubber dam and check the occlusion for irregularities with articulating paper and adjust as needed.